Hey guys, welcome back. We're taking a look at the indoor microphone. Okay, so I went with this particular design because I was thinking I would want to maybe at some point vary the height. So maybe have this one a bit lower down, this one a bit higher up in case there was different size plants or maybe I had some really small ones on this side, larger ones on that side. But I think for most people, you're really not going to need that functionality. It'd be better just to have a solid uh, frame fixture and to hold them in place that you could just go up and down with and have the both of them at the same height all the time. So for the second set, uh, since I bought a four pack and I have two of these tents actually, for the other one I am going to do that and go ahead and build a little fixture to accommodate those. So let's go ahead and get started with that. Let's take a look at the material I'm going to use to build this fixture. So with these particular boards being so light and uh, not putting out much heat, I guess you could use wood for the frame or maybe even PC. But I'm going to go kind of the classic route and use angle metal. So here we have some aluminum. It's 1 16th thick, 3 quarters of an inch this way and this way, and the length is 48 inches, so 4 feet. And for this fixture, I'm going to need two of those. They're uh, about $5 each. So um, I guess if you have a heavier fixture you, or you're going to put the drivers on it as well, Maybe you could get a bit thicker than 1 16th, but uh, for me, this is plenty sturdy enough. It's not flexible at all, really. Okay, so join those together. I'm going to use some number 8 32 by 3 8 inch screws. To hang the fixture, I'm going to go ahead and go the same way I was doing, just use wire. Uh, you could use, uh, you know, those typical clip on metal wire things, whatever they are. And to cut it, you're going to need a hacksaw. I'm going to use one of these, um, have one of these foldable deals that uses any Sawzall reciprocating saw attachment. So I'll be cutting it out with that. It's only four cuts, so it's not a big deal. So that's going to be pretty much it. Uh, oh, sorry, one last thing. Kind of important. We're going to need a drill bit to go through the metal. And you might be able to get away with a wood drill bit. I wouldn't really recommend it. But aluminum in my work. So like these ones, for example, are titanium coated. So it would work for a little while. But better yet, get one of these guys. It's a titanium uh, drill bit. And you can see it's tapered, so it's got all these different sizes on one. And this is definitely worth the investment for drilling metal. You're definitely going to find uses for that. Maybe you could also throw in a little bit of sandpaper to get rid of the burrs on the metal that you cut. Oh, here's a pro tip for you. Put some um, duct tape, gorilla tape on the back of your sandpaper. It'll last much longer. So obviously there's going to be many configurations you can make of this. Check out our previous design and build videos to see what dimensions we're going for. <clears throat> but I mean, uh, you know, you could arrange them like this, like that, uh, whichever way you want. You know, you can even add functionality, but by somehow maybe even if you, if you could cut a channel, you could have like a track system so you could change the position of it. But I'm going to just go for something quite simple to start There here. it is, all cut, drilled, and screwed together. It's got pretty good strength, I would say. Just a little bit of diagonal flex, but really not much at all. So the length here, so in this direction, I made it 29 and a half inches. And this total length here can see there's a bit sticking out there at the ends. That's 13 inches and 3 sixteenths. And the part that I'm using right now is, you know, just from here to here. 
that's 11 inches and 1 8. So in fact, uh, you could use it just like this, you know, attach your hanger somewhere on the corners, like these holes here. Uh, by the way, just a tip for drilling these holes or making this um, all together, make one side, cut that, and then use that as a model to duplicate the other side. Then do the same thing here, cut this and use that to make this side. That way you'll always be symmetric. And for the holes, um, you just got to measure this, sorry, this length here, this dimension here, which is about three quarters of an inch. Divide that by two, and that will be how much you want to offset your screw from the edge in this direction and in this direction. And then once you have one cut, use that, or drilled rather, use that hole to mark it on the next one because it's going to be a tiny bit offset because of the thickness, the 1 16th thickness there. So if you just use one, cut one to make the next one, you really can't go wrong. In fact, you could probably use it as it is right now. Get your uh, corners hooked up and the way it is, you could probably just lay them in there, get your boards connected to the driver and you know, then they could even slide around if you wanted just to test. Um, Test the intensity, see, you know, what position of what, you know, spacing between would give you the performance that you want. By the way, you can just use the Lux Meter app. Most smartphones can handle that, and um, it's not going to give you a calibrated set value, but uh, you can at least see a trend so you can check it right underneath the light and then sweep it over to see if there's significant changes. Here's another that. configuration with the same sizes of rails. <clears throat> Basically I um, took the short one and flipped it to the top. Uh, nice thing I think about this is that you could set this one on the floor and the uh, LEDs wouldn't be touching because they'd be on the rails there. And so they're kind of, uh, the board is sandwiched between the two, uh, making contact with the rails to provide that tiny little bit of a uh, heat sink effect, which again, you don't need for, uh, this particular QB120 board, just cause there's not enough of a density of LEDs on there to really heat it up. Uh, I was testing some of the other ones the other day and, uh, I'm going to do it with the IR gun and the 10, but I was just kind of feeling it out and didn't feel unpleasant so you know that's below 42 celsius so it should be good so yeah there you go i intentionally left uh, a large enough space to put a third one if we wanted to do so again our original design was to have an 18 inch spacing from center to center all right so there it is inside of my tent again it's a uh, two by three by three, it's a secret Jardine DP90. So let's give it a try. Oh. Looking good. A little clone. I think it's a lemon skunk. Okay, looking good. So again, I'm just hanging it with the wires that are looped around the frame there. And using these holes here. So it just happens that the, these floodlight fixtures fit on here. They must be around uh, 12 inches in length. So let's just turn that on and see what that looks like. Oh yeah, nice blue. Really happy with these uh, boards and this little fixture. Really easy, 
really inexpensive, really quick. Made this whole thing in a couple hours here. Yeah, and I can think of already a couple more improvements that I can make to make this even more functional.